Hello and welcome to this After Effects Certification Preparation series of videos. I'm Luisa Winters. In this video, I'd like to discuss two panels. The Comp panel, that's the monitor that we see stuff in, and also the Effects and Presets panel. We are still on Objective 2.2a. Let's go on to After Effects and do it. Here in After Effects, we're still in the same project that we've been working with. This is the one included with your exercise files. Of course, this composition is not included in the exercise files. This is one that we created two movies ago. If you don't have something like this, go ahead and create a composition. We're not really going to do anything yet. We're just talking about panels. So right now, let's go ahead and talk about the composition panel or comp panel. In here, you know already, because we have discussed it, that you can zoom in and out by using the mouse scroll wheel or using the period or the comma keys in your main keyboard. You can also zoom in and out by using these drop-down menus. You can have it at fit, fit up to 100%, and you have any of these percentage, as in view percentages, in here in this drop-down menu. You also have a resolution here that by default is going to be set at auto. So if your display is set at 50%, then half is what it is. And you can see it here in parentheses. You can have full resolution, third quarter, anything like that. Um, at this point, I would recommend leaving it at the default. There is absolutely no reason to show this at full resolution if you're only showing half of the pixels. Well, really, a quarter of the pixels because it's 50% width and 50% height. Um, so there's no need to do that. Let's go ahead and leave it at auto. But if you're finding issues with rendering, like previewing, uh, then you can go here and change this to a quarter or even custom so that you see it in very poor quality, but you will see it. Going on, there are other icons in here. This is the fast preview, so adaptive resolution. You can actually have it off so that uh, this will give you the final quality and you can also have wireframe. If you change this to wireframe, then obviously you're not going to see any of the pixels of the images, but you're going to see wireframe representations of what the image uh, looks like, uh, where it is and that sort of thing. Uh, for right now, I'm just going to leave it at adaptive resolution, which is the default. This icon here is for the transparency grid. You can turn it on and off. And remember, we talked about this, and we also talked about this black being the background color and not being really transparent. If you want to change the black to something else, go to Composition Settings and then change it to whatever color you want. I'm not going to do that, so I'm just going to cancel out of this one. All right, moving on, you see in here another icon, which is Toggle Mask and Shape Path. So this one is actually fairly easy. I'm going to create a new solid. So layer, new, solid. And you don't have to follow me uh, for this. I'm going to leave it at white. And now if I create a mask, say something like this, you can see the path of the mask in here. And in fact, I'm going to change this to none so that you can see it a little bit better. And I'm even going to change the color of the mask to be bright red. And in here, if I click here, that path disappears. I no longer see it. So that's what this refers to. It's not going to really change anything. It's not going to change transparency if I go back to add here and make this invisible. It's not changing anything other than, oh, I see the path and now I don't see it. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that solid because we don't really need it. The next thing is the region of interest. So imagine I'm rendering something quite complicated and I really only want to see what a small portion of the, uh, uh, of the screen needs to look like. I'm just previewing, right? So I could draw a region of interest like yay. So I just clicked on this uh, icon first and now only that will render. If I don't want to see the region of interest anymore, all I have to do is click on that icon again, and there you go. And by the way, I can trim the comp, so crop it to the region of interest. Like if I have a region of interest like yay, I can go to composition and then crop comp to region of interest. And this comp used to be 1920 by 1080. And right now it is 
374 by 266. So I can also use the region of interest to crop my composition to whatever size I need to. Of course, we don't want to do that, so I'm going to undo. Remember, undo is your best friend. That is Control Z on Windows, Command Z on the Mac. This icon here is for you to see things that will not be rendered, things like the title and action safe areas. We spoke about that on Objective 1. You can also click to see a proportional grid, and you can go to the preferences, so uh, edit preferences, and then in here you can go to grids and guides, and on the Mac it's going to be under After Effects preferences, get grids and guides, and in here, you can simply tell it how your proportional grid can go. For example, you can say a grid line every, I don't know, 120 pixels. Uh, and on the proportional grid, I can have it uh, 3 by 3, for example. And that's going to change the display. If I don't want guides or don't want grids, I can simply deselect them here. But notice how this proportional grid is now giving me a perfect rule of thirds. Alrighty, I can also have the grid in here and again under the preferences, so edit, preferences, grids, grids and guides, and uh, I can change also how many pixels in between. So I can have this to be a whole lot more with uh, no, say, one subdivision only, and you can see how that totally changed uh, the grid. So you can also have guides, and uh, right now can't really create new guides because we're not showing the rulers, but if we show the rulers, we can then drag the guides from out of the rulers, not just horizontally, but vertically as well. So obviously I've made a mess out of this whole thing, so now I'm going to go to view, and I'm going to say, hey, don't show the grid, view, don't show the guide, and view, don't show the rulers. And now I'm still with my proportional grid, and I can go here and tell it that I don't want to see that as well. So, you know, it's, it can be very convenient, but if you just made a mess like what I did right now, it can be quite annoying as well. Uh, the good thing is that you can turn them on and off. All right, going on, we see here for channel and color management, like if I only want to see the red channel or I only want to see the green channel, you see how the display changes. I'm going to leave it at RGB, but notice that you can also uh, uh, see the RGB straight or pre-multiplied. That's way too advanced uh, for the test, but you can also see the alpha channel only. Alrighty, moving on, and here you can reset the exposure. So what does that mean, reset the exposure? You know, if I click here, nothing really changes. Yeah, you know, I can increase the exposure, I can decrease the exposure, right? See these values? And then I can also reset them. You can take a snapshot. Like, you know, I need to compare this to something later on, so I take a snapshot, and then I move my playhead, I can click here, and it goes back to that snapshot. So it's kind of like before, after, before the effect, after the effect, or whatever it is that I want to do. So I can use this snapshot as a comparison tool. Finally, this number here, see it's in time codes. This says now 1227. It agrees with this 1227 here. It's really where the playhead is. You can type the values here, or you can type values here as well. So that's pretty much it for the comp uh, panel. There are other things that are not necessarily on the test, but you may want to explore on your own. Like this has a panel menu, and then you can go to view options and you can change, uh, you can make things visible or not. So, you know, I'm not really going to cover that. Uh, and there are other uh, things in here as well. All right. So let's go to the effects and presets panel. If you don't, see it, go to Window, Effects and Presets, there it is, but it's actually here in the default workspace. I'm just going to make this a little bit larger, and there you go. And in the Effects and Presets, you can see all of the presets that we have, and we have things for backgrounds, behaviors, etc., etc., and we also have all of the effects here. 
So I've been using After Effects for a long, long time. And uh, before this little search bar existed, I knew where every effect was. Every effect, you know, I, I could just tell you because I used it so much, right? But now, since I have this little search bar, it's like I don't have a clue where things are. I used to know, but I forgot. Say I want a Gaussian blur. Eh, I just type a gau. And before I'm done type, typing, like all I did was type gauss. There it is. And I can just apply it. If I want to apply any effect or preset for that matter to a particular layer, all I need to do is drag it to the layer and that's it, right? If the layer is selected and I want to apply it, double click it. You can apply it by dragging it here to the comp panel or by dragging it to the timeline. I'm just undoing. Whenever you add an effect or preset for that matter, the effect controls panel is gonna open here on the top left and that should happen by default. If it doesn't, you can go to window, effect controls and you know, whatever composition, whatever effect, and then you will be able to manipulate the effect using the effect controls panel. Yes, you can also do it in the timeline, but it's much more convenient to manipulate this effect in the effect controls panel and not anywhere else, all right? Alrighty, next I want to talk about the preview panel and that's also in here. Uh, now I'm gonna X out of uh, that uh, Gauss that I typed before and now I'm gonna go to the preview panel. I can actually preview things uh, and I can change the shortcut. For example, I could have the numeric pad zero to do preview or the space bar or anything like this. I can loop, you know, to play once or uh, by default After Effects previews are going to, to loop. I can include video, I can include audio, I can include overlays and layer controls on my preview or not. And I can also say, hey, cache before the, the playback. In other words, save the preview to the cache. By default, it's going to be the work area. So if I want to preview only this, um, see B to start the work area, move the playhead and then N to end it. And I can just preview the work area. Right now, it's uh, and the default is to uh, render the work area extended by current time, but I can say, hey, only the work area. So if I press the space bar, you're going to see that only the work area is going to, to preview and by default is looping. That is what those settings are telling After Effects to do. To pause, press the space bar again. So, you know, you can play directly from the current time or you can go to the start of range. Like if I want to always preview from the start of that range that is uh, selected by the work area bar, there you go, I just changed it. It's just gonna go automatically and start previewing from the beginning of that range. In other words, from the beginning point of the work area bar. And moving on, you're going to see that you can preview full screen or not. So full screen is simply this, you know, when I preview, it just overtakes the entire screen. And when I pause, it goes back to what it had before. I find this distracting and it takes a little too much system resources. I'm gonna go back to, to this view. And, uh, you know, and on space bar stop. So when you press the space bar to stop the preview, then, you know, you can play only the cache frames or you can move the time to the preview time, whatever it is. So there are some settings that you can change in the preview here. And there is also a panel menu. Uh, you know, you can favor the active uh, camera that's really for 3D or not, et cetera, et cetera. So there are some settings that you can change in this preview panel. And that brings us to the end of this video. So thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next video.